It is Scott Fluffy Bonsai. Today I'm taking a look at this PowerShot SX420IS from Canon. Standard bridge camera format. You have the fixed lens and a small sensor inside. So I'm going to compare this to a smartphone in image quality, video quality, and also maybe a mirrorless camera as well. Are these cameras decent these days? Let's try to find out. This specific camera has a built-in 42x optical zoom lens with image stabilization. So that's a nice feature on there. Also 20 megapixels, but it is the small 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. So that's kind of the same sensor as action cameras these days, still a little tiny bit larger than most smartphone sensors. Let's take a look at the build quality, a lot of plastics, but they feel pretty decent. Doesn't really creak too much or anything like that. It does have a built-in flash, which you have to pull up manually. Of course, the lens is fixed to the camera. You cannot change it. Let's take a look at the lens. It does come with this little cap, the strap on there. And if you want to turn the camera on, it's on the top here. On off button, plus a jog dial for zoom and the shutter button. Let's turn it on, see how quick it goes. Let's go through the range of the zoom. So it's fully wide. So you can see it extends quite a bit. On the bottom here, we have the tripod connector. It is a metal, which is good. One thing to take note of with the tripod socket is not in line with the lens. So if you do panoramas or something, just keep that in mind. And the battery door, take that battery out. They do have different capacity versions of this NB11. This is the LH, which has 800 milliamp hours. And your memory card is in the same area as the battery. SD does have a little door here, so there is potentially some type of replacement. If you wanted to use AC power, you could get a DC coupler in there. It does have a little door here for your USB connection. So this is a very old style USB connection. Camera does come with a charger, so no USB charging in this case. Video record button, auto toggle, so auto or program modes like that. Review button and a directional pad plus a function set button in the middle. Mini button and a wireless connection button. So it does have Wi-Fi connectivity. The camera does have NFC connectivity for the app. I do not have any NFC devices, so I can't test that out. The grip is pretty decent for a small camera like this, and it is relatively compact considering the 42x zoom. So you've got your auto toggle button. Normally it'll be in auto mode by default. If you do press that, it'll give you options to adjust the camera in more detail. If you press the function set button, you'll have other options here. So light metering, you've got your color settings, which is adjustments to the JPEG image. You're not going to have raw capability with this camera, so something like that could be useful. Here we've got white balance settings. This is also something useful when you only have JPEG. Also have timer settings, so if you do want to set a timer with the camera, that could be useful in some situations. Here is our image formats. So 16 by 9, 3 by 2, the default is 4 by 3. That's the standard sensor size, and there is also 1 to 1 ratio. And you've got your pixel settings here. If you wanted to take smaller photos for some reason, you could do that. Add your HD movie settings or VGA. HD is 720p. When you're in program mode, you've got your super fine image quality or fine image quality. I believe that is default, so if you want the highest image quality possible, go into program mode with super fine. Let's go into the main menu. You have a few other options in here. You have your autofocus frame, so center, face AIAF, and also tracking autofocus. Let's do tracking autofocus. So in this case, you can try to track a subject by half pressing the shutter on something, and then you can move the camera, and hopefully it will track that subject. It appears to be working okay at the moment with this simple subject. And with the center frame autofocus, you have different sizes, so normal and small. You also have a few other settings based on servo mode, so continuous focus settings, Autofocus beam assist, that light right here. The image stabilization does have some settings to it. Continuous mode is default, or you can do only taking photos or turn it off completely. And in continuous, you have two different settings for stabilization. And there is also a date stamp. If you're gonna use that, it's an old film era feature where it will fully embed a date and time on your images. Let's try out the wireless mode and see if it works. And we've got a nickname that it wants. Transfer images between cameras, smartphone, computer, Wi-Fi printer, or upload to a web surface. Let's do the smartphone, add device. In this case, you turn the camera into the Wi-Fi mode and you have to connect your phone to this access point. So in this case, 
we've got the phone right there we can connect to and then you have to do a password then you boot up the Canon Connect app then you also have to confirm it let's try the remote live shooting so you can actually zoom the camera through the app which is pretty cool do you have the timer so that'll be good if you want to do family portraits or something not much to the app other cameras do have a lot more settings I will be going over the image quality of this camera so you can take a look at it and see if it is detailed enough for you. Of course, you got the nice optical zoom lens, which I do think is still a good benefit compared to most smartphones. There are some smartphones with optical zoom lenses, but they won't be this good. So there's a 42X that's a pretty long range on it, which is 4.3 to 180. 6 millimeters based on the sensor size. Of course you can convert that to a full frame equivalent if you want and the aperture is f 3.5 to 6.6 .6 through the range. The phone that I'm using to compare it to is the Moto G Stylus 5G. It does not have an optical zoom lens so there is a very big difference with this camera compared to that phone. Indoors I also do a test with the Canon EOS M50. You can see the differences between this camera and a decent camera that you can change the lenses on. It is relatively compact and low cost, so you do have the nice optical zoom lens, but besides that, you have to decide for yourself what there is to uh, benefit from. It's too bad these cameras still don't have raw image format, but they're meant to be pretty simple. That was a look at the Canon PowerShot SX420iS compared to other options out there. If you enjoyed the video, I'm Scott from Trophy Bonsai. Thanks.